We're going to go at fair pace. Um, we're going to talk, uh, show, share with you uh, a case study uh, that we've done very recently with Jacob's Cracker Crisps, which Wes will talk you through. To set that up, I'm going to talk about some of the challenges brands face with MPD and with promotions, and then Wes will take you through the launch of Jacob's Cracker Crisps and exactly what we did to help mobile influence the purchase decision. So. As we go. In terms of MPD, I probably don't need to tell you that MPD is important to brands, essential to growth. Going right back to sort of 1957 with Ansoft's Matrix, anyone who's done a marketing degree will certainly sort of be familiar with this. So, um, you know, all the companies, all, all the brands we're dealing with, MPD very essential to growth. Um, the problem with MPD though tends to be a lot of it is quite unsuccessful so depending where you look different companies will give you different claims on success rates. Uh, Harvard Business Review estimating 75% of products fail in the first year. TNS talking about 80% of product launches fail. Nielsen even claiming that 90% of MPD fails. This doesn't feel like the most uh, acoustically uh, smooth presentation ever. Um, so why does sort of you know between 75 and 90 percent of MPD fail? Um, you can get lots of material on, on, on this. Harvard Business Review giving you a whole 40 ways to crash a new product launch, splitting those in terms of 13 ways you can go wrong pre-launch and another 27 ways you can go wrong in the launch phase. Um, but one of the challenges, particularly in FMCG brands, is the sort of the habitual behaviour of the shopper were very much sort of. Uh, can you? It doesn't feel like any sound <laughs> coming out. Oh, we're back, we're back. Um, but people typically buy the same sort of 100, 200 items time and time again. So it's very, very difficult to get into their repertoire. Um, as, 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 as I say, getting something new on the list is incredibly important, incredibly difficult. And at the same time, people are operating in this sort of in-store environment. So when you're launching MPD, you've actually got to win in this environment. You've got to get noticed. You've got to get the shopper to make a purchase in something like that. Yeah, and, and I'd just say from a, from a manufacturer, being the voice of the manufacturer here, um, in the biscuits category, probably anything up to about 7% of the category each year is, is dedicated to well, the value comes through from MPD, so it's quite an important part, MPD is to biscuits, but we also conform to that only about 90, well, 10% of it actually succeeds. And one of, the, one of the key reasons why it doesn't succeed in biscuits is that, is that that aftercare package, that repeat, everyone tends to go with a big bang up front and then, then kind of forgets about the after, that's one of the key reasons, but yeah, a lot of attrition. Okay, so faced with launching a new product, faced with trying to make it win in this sort of environment, then the challenge for the brand is really to sort of shout, to get noticed, and inevitably to promote that brand to encourage trial. So if we think about promotion, there are some inherent problems with traditional promotions. I'll just have a quick whiz through those. So first of all is this, you know, how do you get noticed? You go into a typical supermarket now, you'll be faced with an environment something like that. There are hundreds or thousands of different promotions in store. You know, typically 80,000 different items. Um, I, I think sort of maybe 30, 40, even 50% of those might be on deal at any one time. So how do you get your promotion noticed? Second challenge is when you're promoting, you've developed a new product, you actually want to be sort of communicating the brand values. But again, with any promotion, it's all about price. The communication is all about deal, discount, money off. It's not about the brand value, what a great new brand, brand you have. So by the very act of promoting, you're typically destroying rather than creating brand value. Third problem, many decisions are actually made pre-store. Yeah? It's a fact that most shoppers have decided what they're going to buy before they go shopping and before they get to the shelf. 
So the act of promotion or price promotion in store, you're trying to interrupt people uh, at the point of purchase. But nine times out of ten, well, not quite nine times out of ten, but six or seven times out of ten, people have made that brand choice. They've made that purchase decision before they get to the sh shelf. The next thing about a typical promotion is we don't, with one or two exceptions with loyalty card data, etc., but we don't really know who's buying. If you think about a promotion in store, it's available to everyone who walks down the aisle. So we've got no targeting, it's available to everyone in store. It, whoever picks it up, we don't really know. We have no identification of the shopper, and therefore we can't follow up. So if someone's bought your brand, we can't actually go back to them and ask them sort of what they thought of it, or give them another, uh, another communication or a relevant offer. And finally, from a brand perspective, all of the control, perhaps all of the value on the promotion actually lies with the retailer. So the retailer is controlling the promotional schedule. It's not actually up to you when you put the promotion on. It's up to the retailer. Indeed, will they allow you? They're controlling things around position on shelf. They're con controlling the gondola ends, um, the, the whole look and feel of the promotion, how much you might shout about price. And obviously, there's high costs involved, um, You know, the cost for extra display, et cetera. With. Yeah, and from a, and again, if there are any kind of manufacturers or suppliers out there, you'll kind of familiarise, or you'll be familiar with the principle of, it's just very difficult. It's prime retail, uh, prime real estate to actually get onto the gondola and space. And when some categories are getting, or some brands are getting anything up to about 50 to 80 percent of their volume sold through from the actual this prime gondola end space versus the shelf itself, the whole dynamic of retail has changed over the last kind of eight years whereby shoppers are just wandering down that center section and as a result lots of lots of competition to get on that gondola end and also once you are on that gondola end being able to stand out and get shoppers to notice you is getting harder and harder okay so I've hopefully set up the problem the sort of uh, you know the importance of MPD the problem with promotion um, and ah, sorry <laughs> should have rehearsed um, so if we think about that, any ideal promotion will do a number of things for shoppers. It will, first of all, it'll get noticed, it'll cut through the crowd and it'll, it'll stand out. It'll engage shoppers, but it'll engage shoppers with brand content, not just with money off promotion slogans. It'll influence a shopper decision, but it'll influence that decision pre-store when most decisions are made. It won't wait till we get to the shelf. It'll be targeted at shoppers. It'll be targeted at shoppers based on their purchase history, so it's relevant. It'll be controlled by the brand rather than the retailer. It'll be flexible. We'll be able to react as, as the shopper moves. Um, we need to be able to measure what's going on, know who's buying, measure it every step of the way. And it needs to be very cost effective and make sure it's providing return on investment for the brand. And for brands, the promotions will typically do one or two or three things. It'll help either build product trial, which will be the example we'll come on to show you, or it'll help drive repeat purchase or loyalty, or it maybe will help steal shoppers from competitors. Um, and all of the time, it can help people. It needs to be looking at how we can reduce spend on discounting, be cost effective. So I say, hopefully I've set up the problem, um, the, the importance of MPD, the problems with traditional promotions and promoting MPD. So I'll now hand over to Wes to talk about the launch of Jacob's Cracker Crisps earlier this year and how uh, United Biscuits will use mobile to try and influence or support that launch. Okay, so just a, a very quick, just to set the scene in terms of what we did this year. So the biggest piece of MPD we launched as a McVitie's Jacobs company this year was, um, was the launch of, launch of Jacobs Crack Crisp. So we did the usual stuff. Um, we did all the multi-channel advertising, huge heavyweight through the line campaign, supported by price-driven um, promotions in store. But the whole proposition was all about that sharing moment that you know the kettles crisps the pringles crisps this is like a baked version of that so that just helps you understand what the product was and what we did this year um and early results are pretty good so we've achieved eight percent penetration the repeat rate's 30 percent um and the share of category got when especially when we're on promotion was about five percent so it's, it's doing pretty well but that was all in mainly all of that was done through the through the initial launch phase and then it's okay so what next and which we'll come on to So that, that was the launch, as, as Wes was saying, sort of heavy trade support above, be, uh, above below the support. Um, but 
United Biscuits were keen to sort of, I think it was your first dabble into mobile and, and how we could use mobile to sort of support that launch, you know, pretty much on a trial basis, but to see how we could use mobile to influence a purchase decision. So first, before I go hand back to Wes, I just need to talk to you about how Shoppertize, my, my, uh, my, my, my company, works in, in, in one slide. And if you, if you think about um, how mobile can be used to influence purchase decisions, um, we think about shoppers, we immediately think about in-store, and so we think about, okay, mobile, people always have their mobile with them, how can I get to the shopper, how can I sort of reach the shopper in-store at the point of purchase to influence their purchase decision. Um, there's a really important point here is, and do me a favour, next time you go supermarket shopping, look how many people are using their mobiles in-store. Um, I've studied this in a previous life, or well, no, a previous job. Um, typically it tends to be below 1% are using their mobile in store. And those that are using their phones in store or their mobile in store are either making calls or responding to text messages. Yeah? So if we're trying to influence the shopper purchase decision, um, we actually need to think how we can use mobile to influence that decision out of store. So the way Shoppertize works, uh, app-based, free to download app, we serve promotions in the, uh, in, in, in the app every week. They're refreshed every, every, every Wednesday. So if you're a shopper, you know every Wednesday coming that you're getting the new list of offers for that, for that week. If you see anything you're interested in, you simply tap on that offer to what we call view the offer of interest. So here you can see with Jacob's Cracker Crisps how we had it in our carousel view. If I was interested in it, I would tap in it and then if I sort of wanted to buy that offer, I would then have to do what I call unlocking the offer. Tap on that offer to unlock the, uh, the, the, the pound as was here on, on, on display. Um, that, the act, very act of unlocking the offer adds it to my shopping list. Um, I then go to store as normal. I find that product in store and I buy it. And when I get home, I then sort of scan the barcode as proof of purchase and I upload my till receipt through the app. That credit, that one pound off, is then added to my bank account or my PayPal account or whatever, I've, however I've chosen to have, have it added. So from a shopper perspective, very easy. I view the offers, I unlock the offers, I upload my till receipt and I get the money paid to my bank account. From a brand perspective, if you think there's two stages going on here, there's the pre-store phase. And pre-store, I am getting exposure for my brand. I'm getting, you know, shoppers are doing this in their own time over a cup of tea at home, etc. So I'm getting exposure for my brand, I'm getting consideration for my brand, and I'm getting engagement. And I'm getting engagement around a brand message rather than around a price discount or, promo or promotional message. And then post store, I'm getting the purchase ver verification with the barcode. And most importantly of all, I'm then getting shopper data from the till receipt. So we're, we're extracting all of the information from the till receipt that we can then use for follow-up targeting and, and, and to build a, a database about that shopper. So Wes will now talk about how we use that with Jacob's Cracker Crisps. Yeah, so as mentioned, it, it, it was a launch, right? So we didn't necessarily go down the targeted approach. We wanted kind of mass visibility and, uh, and appeal. So the, the deal we set up through Shoppertize was to highlight all parts of the range. Um, it was a pound off um, offer, ran for three weeks, just through Tesco only, so it ran three weeks from 30th of September. But then what we did was for the people that bought into the offer, we then targeted them for a couple of weeks afterwards to say, we noticed that you repeat purchase, uh, we noticed that you bought this, encourage them to repeat purchase into again into the brand and get that, get that um, continual um, purchasing element, uh, the frequency up, through offering them like a 50p promotion straight afterwards. But that was only for the people that bought into the brand in the first place. Um, and just a, a quick kind of look at the results. So of the 100% of, the of Tesco shoppers that are on the uh, um, Shoppertize database, 55% viewed the offer. So if you constantly reference back to are 55% of Tesco shoppers seeing my product in store? Well, obviously they're not. There's 20, 30,000 products in there. So 55% to even view the product is, is, is pretty high, we thought. Then of those, of those, which ones then went in and unlocked the offer? Well, you're getting about a quarter hit rate at this stage to say, 
I say, I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to unlock the offer. And they go through to learning more about the brand. And then the acid test of it all is once they've gone and learned about the product itself, did they ultimately go in, buy the product and redeem it? Well, 15% of them did. So a 15% hit rate from targeting 100% of the shoppers on the database, we saw as a, as a really good success. Um, along the way, um, rather than just kind of put it onto the app and then let it just kind of hope that they see it, there are ways that you can use the app to, to make sure that you get noticed by the app users. So um, there is a couple of facilities that you can do. One is a, an in-app message that gets sent to them to actually push it to the front of their app to say, did you know that this is on, on offer? They will obviously see in the carousel view on the list view right at the start. Um, there is also a, a, the kind of a, the Shopitize Facebook element as well, where it gets posted up there as well. So all of this is trying to get that consideration mindset. Um, um, and also this is, um, oh yeah, targeted emails as well, wasn't it? That we did as well. So all of this, the stuff that you don't necessarily get without paying hundreds of thousands of pounds with the retailer, you can actually switch on quite electronically really easy to, get, to build that consideration and awareness of your brand. Um, yeah, the, the other thing that's really good about the app is that you, w there's that unlocking the offer means that they go from just noticing it to actually engaging with what the proposition's all about. So what, as marketeers or shopping marketeers or even salespeople, what you're trying to do is get people to understand what your brand and your proposition's all about. The step check in the app does a really good job of saying, okay, this is what it, this is what the offer is, but then it goes in there, and what we were trying to unlock was that share and occasion. So it was an occasion-based marketing play. So the key element to actually get the, the person to think as a shopper but also a consumer this is how I'm going to use it it's the, the the sharing was brought to life with it so that was the that was the occasion play that we put into it as part of that check step um, and then ultimately what we all want to be is given there's that principle that most people know what they're going to buy before they actually go into the store itself I mean, uh, what, what I do is actually make a list on my iPhone as well and take it in, and that's how I use my mobile phone. But what this does, it actually puts it into your shopping basket before you've gone into the store as well. So again, it's really encouraging to you to, to seal the deal, to, to turn the consideration into buy. Um, the other thing you can do whilst it's during the promotion as well, it's called here, control. This is almost like the in-flight in control of the promotion as well. So as you're... As the offer is going on there, you can continually remind people that it's there. So um, if, you, if somebody went in and went to the stage where they, where they almost unlocked it but didn't, you can track those people that got to the certain sort of three quarters of the way through the process, that sec well, third step of the process, to say, we notice you saw it, you've not tried them yet, so to remind them to try and continually try and push them to purchase. Um, yeah, there's the Facebook BuzzFeed as well where you can post and try and get people talking about it, the people that have bought it that go in and kind of post around it. Um, and yeah, what was this last one? Remind me, Barry. That's a last day reminder again on Facebook. There you go. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> so where the offer's just about to run out, it's like, quick, get it before it's gone. Um, and like I said, we encourage repeat as well. So um, of the people that bought it, those 25% people that bought it, we then said to them, okay, did you like it? You know, we noticed you bought the the cre uh, sour cream and onion version. We have two other ver two other products available, and try and get them to start purchasing around the brand as well. So um, that was where the 50p offer to uh, to people that purchased the product. That that's where they could unlock that. Okay, and and ultimately, ultimately, w what we're trying to do as as manufacturers is to either is to try and drive penetration or increase frequency. Oh, and, and, and conversion is one of the ways that we try and unlock that, don't we, through a measure. So just on, on a very kind of simple kind of um, comparison level, what we were getting from just running Tesco in store, you're getting about a 2% hit rate of conversion from people that go into Tesco that were buying into the brand. What you get through mobile technology such as Shoppertize is you're getting a hit rate and a conversion rate of about 15% of those shoppers. So you can really see that, I don't know, the difference that in-store versus uh, digital technology can make. Okay, thanks very much, Wes. And just to um, just just to finish off, we talked about how an ideal promotion would do one of several things for brands. Um, it can help build product trial, and we've just shown you the example with Jacobs Cracker, Cracker Chris how mobile can support that trial or that launch. Obviously, with Jacobs Cracker Chris being a new brand, we haven't done work where we've looked at sort of how we can drive repeat purchase or loyalty other than that triggered offer 
or how even we can sort of steal shoppers from, from competitors or even reduce spend on the overall level of discounts. So I just wanted to share with you one example on each of those just to, to, to finish. day so what you can do is actually make the purchase or, or make the promotion sort of time series related so so in this instance a very simple promotion we've done we've done on on, on skittles uh, actually the promotion was by three times in a period of time to earn the reward we set it up so it was 10p on the first offer 10p on the second offer but then a pound on the third offer so earn one pound 20 for purchasing three times and you can see that we had um, you know, 7% buy into the first offer, but nearly all of those have converted through to the third offer. They see it as a loyalty deal, so we've actually done a promotion that has done got people to buy on three separate occasions. Again, really, really important in terms of forming shop, sort of shopper habits. Um, you know, so some people subscribe to the view that sort of get people to buy three times and then they're hooked. Yeah, and and I think manufacturer hat on again. One thing you'll have noticed if you've been in FMCG long enough um, is that multi-buys and multi-saves, those loyalty driving th um, mechanics have died out since, since about eight years ago. That prime gondor end space is used for half prices and, and single price point TPR promotions. Um, and three for twos and, and, and three for two pounds or whatever it might be, multi-buys, multi-saves, have become a bit out of fashion. And it's basically a risk for the retailer because they're like, Oh my God, am I going to be getting as much value out of this as I would by doing a big deep cut deal? And I think what well, as suppliers and as manufacturers and as brand owners, multi-buys and multi-saves are a thing that really help drive the value into our brand and this, this is a mechanic for getting that. If we think about how we can sort of maybe still share from competitors, again, if you go with a traditional promotion, you're putting that available to everyone. It's available to everyone who walks down the aisle. Actually, some people will buy your brand week in, week out, whatever may. Others will buy it in maybe as part of a repertoire. Others won't buy it at all. So here's something we did where we looked at personal buyers and we identified people who bought only personal. Every time they buy washing detergents, they buy personal. We looked at people who buy personal and other brands. So they buy personal in repertoire. And we looked at people who don't buy personal at all. They always buy other brands. So we targeted an attractive offer, £2.50 off. We didn't serve it to the loyalists. There's no point. They're going to buy the brand anyway. So why do I waste money giving people who are going to buy my brand anyway a discount? But we did serve it to those who buy my brand in repertoire or don't buy the band, brand at all. And so what you get is a pretty high redemption rate from those that buy in repertoire. And actually from those that aren't buying the brand, we're getting a 5%, so a one in 20. You know, these are really valuable people to me. These are new customers who I might be able to convert into my, in, in, into my brand. And then just one final example, um, you know, discounts, promotions cost an awful lot of money. So getting return on investment or cost effectiveness is huge. So again, with the flexibility within the platform, what we did here was do three different offers simultaneously, just to three different groups of sh shoppers. One group we gave 35 pence off, second group 50 pence off, and the third group 65 pence off. You get what you might expect. The redemption rates are, you know, there's a correlation with the size of the, or depth of the discount. But interestingly, if you then start doing the calculation on return on investment, you find that the very low offer, the 35% off, is giving a much better return on investment than the, higher, the, 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 than the higher offer at the 65 pence off. So just to conclude, a sort of you know, key takeouts from, 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 from our brief session this morning. You know, mobile can effectively influence shopper decisions, but it doesn't have to be in store. Actually, if you're trying to influence shopper decisions in supermarkets with mobile, um, you're probably going to fail. Um, you need to think about the pre-store piece, you need to think about the post-store piece. The example we've shown you has shown in terms of conversion how mobile can be sort of five to ten times more effective at converting shoppers than a traditional in-store promotion. Um, and maybe going back to the first point, but 
convenience and relevance for shoppers is critical. You've got to think about how you can work with the shopper, meet the shopper on their own terms, rather than how you're going to sort of interrupt or disrupt the shopper at shelf. Um, so that's us. So there, I think we have a few minutes left for questions, if there's any questions from the, from the group. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, just a quick question. Are the offers unique to the app users or do they align with the offers in store? No, they're unique to app users. So it, it's independent of anything that's going on in, 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 in store. And the, the brands will not want to be um, promoting in store and then promoting with us at the same time because it'll be a sort of a double discount. Yeah, the, the way we used it was a, almost like a complimentary add-on. You've got your standard promotional plan that you would have in store, but then you would augment it with something you know and, and, and spot the gaps where you haven't got it and then do some more value driving stuff so doubling up as Mike <laughs> hi I just wanted to ask so on Shopitize, how many of pe users that are on there how many of them how many are there in the UK and like what kind of target audience is it like, that we'd use Shopify instead of going like you said in store directly Sorry, can you repeat the, the last bit of the question? So it, earlier, in answer to the previous question, you wouldn't advertise on both. Yeah. So how many users are there on Shopitize yeah. in, compared to in-store? So um, currently, uh, there's about 20,000, 20, 25,000. We're in a sort of, we've been in a sort of a test phase for about 18 months. From February next year, um, we have a couple of audience partnerships that will kick in, so we will be well into the hundreds of thousands, even even towards mi millions by uh, by the end of 2016. But for, from February next year, we'll be reaching about a quarter of a million. How? Yeah. So the question was, how do we get people to download the app? So currently, we've been in test phase. We've done no marketing whatsoever. Um, we've had about a quarter of a million people download um, over about that 18 month period. We have had some publicity in sort of Daily Mail, The Guardian, The Sun, etc., from time to time, but we've done no marketing. From February, um, we've actually signed a sort of a long term deal with some national publications where we'll be promoting our offers every week to a reach of about 25 million people. So along the sort of, you know, only available in shopper ties type. So, you know, if, if we were next year, we'd be doing Jacob's Cracker Crisps. We'd be sort of only available in shopper ties, you know, to, to about 25 million people. Uh, what can you, you redeem the, the offers online? As in, if you were going into like Tesco.com, for example, is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah. I, I just want to do it online. Ah, so currently, no. <laughs> sort of tomorrow, yes. And, and, and tomorrow is, is a couple of weeks away, if you like. <laughs> um, for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, we've obviously, the, part of the reason we're there is, is currently, I don't know, what, 90% plus of. Uh, of UK retail is on FMCG gro of grocery retail. Yeah, still, it's still, uh, it's still uh, less than 10%. Yeah. So, so it hasn't been a, yeah, the, the amount of online as a share is quite small. So, so it hasn't been a priority. Most people are still reeling around the trolleys each week. <laughs>